Hi, my name is Sean Barry, and today we're going to go build a uh, detailed inventory report. So this is BDSSA. I'm assuming you have this in your environment. And what we're going to do, I'm logged in using a role that has visibility into uh, Query Studio, and we're going to go launch Query Studio. So Query Studio comes up pretty quickly. Things I really like about it are uh, it's very easy to, it's very fast. Uh, it'll help you uh, build out basically one query very quickly. So what we want to do is we want to build today a server inventory report. Now, one of the nice things about this is this is a good, easy way to con communicate con uh, what Blade Logic knows about the server inventory out to our other partners. Now, there may be uh, CMDB, there may be other systems of record in the environment. Uh, Blade Logic may need to talk to all of these, but the thing that this report does really well is it helps us communicate to our partners um, what Blade Logic knows about the environment. So as we come down to the inventory domain, we look in the server list, and the order that you click this stuff in does matter. So as I look under the server tab, I see server name. I'm going to grab OS vendor, then name. So I'll give you Microsoft, then Windows, you know, 2012. There's your IP address, major, minor, and state. And that'll give us the background information about the agents. So we fill that in. We see that we see... You know, there's uh, this server. It is a Microsoft Windows 2012 server. <clears throat> Probably got updated at some point in its life. And as we scroll down. Uh, all right. So this is kind of the basic server inventory. So if you just want to provide a list of servers to people, this would be a great place to start. Also lets you flag any unavailable agents in your environment. Pretty easy, right? The next thing that I like to do is I like to go pull in the basic hardware information. And that helps a lot of people understand uh, that helps people understand a lot of the details behind the servers. Uh, we tend to get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of requests for things like, you know, hey, can you get me the server make and model? And all that information is in here uh, and easy to get. So there's the make and model, uh, serial number, amount of installed memory, number of CPUs, sockets, and cores are a common thing that people ask for. And people will sometimes ask for the domain that they're in and the domain role, especially on Windows. Easy fields, easy to grab in, pull them over. Now, because this stuff is captured from a snapshot, you do need to select what kind of snapshot information you want. And I'm always gonna pick latest data. So I pick that, click OK, and it's gonna show me uh, the newest information. All right, so I see that uh, a lot of these boxes are made by VMware, surprise, surprise. 20 gigs of RAM, two CPU sockets and cores, and uh, these servers are standalone. They're not a member of a domain. So there's that basic information as well. Good, useful information. And the last thing I'll do is I'll pull in server properties. So your environment probably has a lot more fields than this does, uh, but usually I'll have things in here such as uh, uh, the environment, whether it's a dev QA stage or prod server, who our internal customer is, um, you know, I may have a, a service or a major functional area uh, that the server, server is associated with. But for this demo, I'm just going to pull in a couple of fields. Now, I will very often use customer as an internal customer uh, to identify who, you know, which line of business owns a particular server. If that's not set, it makes it harder for me to, uh, to group my servers uh, by environment or to, uh, you know, to figure out who owns a server. And very often some of that stuff's baked into a server mnemonic. But what I'm going to do is any server that doesn't have uh, doesn't have uh, the customer name set, I'm going to go ahead and flag that as being poor. And what that'll do is that will give us the ability to easily flag out all of those servers. So any server that is in an unavailable state will go ahead and flag as well. Just go pick. Uh, what that's good for is that'll help our uh, that'll help our business partners uh, help us find and remediate uh, the servers that are not in a healthy place. Click OK, and any agents that are unavailable would have been red flagged. Good, good. All right. So the last thing we'll do is we will uh, add a couple of filters uh, because server data does change over time. Servers get upgraded, uh, decommissioned, recommissioned. Uh, sometimes they come back in on the same IP address and host name, of course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the latest server properties. So this will make sure to uh, this will make sure to get us always the latest data. And uh, for inventory purposes, I don't care uh, in this report about servers that have been decommissioned. So we'll go ahead and add that in there. There's our filters. 
and let's call this the detailed server inventory report. If you're smart, you copy it right there, and then you can go save this. <clears throat> and I usually build a custom folder for this stuff. There's my custom queries folder. Paste in the name, and there you go. All right, next time we'll talk about uh, how to make a report view out of this and uh, how to schedule it to run on a regular basis. Thanks.